analgesia is the suppression of pain sensation or loss of pain sensation now analgesia varies tremendously from person to person this happens partly from a capability of the brain itself to suppress the input of pain signal to the nervous system by activating pain control system now stress analgesia is mediated by activation of the descending pain inhibiting pathway as uh, in case of uh, a war soldier may uh, be severely wounded but in presence of excitement he may feel no pain during the period of stress and this is due to the activation of the pain control system of the brain that is descending pain control mechanism and another point of discovery was that the stimulation of large type fiber like a beta fiber that is uh, tas fiber can depress the transmission of pain from the same body area pain inhibiting mechanisms are thought to be due to the following that is gate control theory and endogenous pain inhibiting mechanism or descending pain inhibiting mechanism let's discuss about the gate control theory now large diameter fibers like a beta in the dorsal column give recurrent collaterals to the pain afferent pathway directly or through inhibiting interneuron that acts like a gate so when large diameter fibers are stimulated for example by touching around the wounded area now the touch fibers gives collateral to the pain afferent nerve pathway from the wound directly or by interneuron thereby it inhibits the transmission of the pain so presynaptic inhibition occurs by the touch fiber on the pain fibers therefore it decreases the pain sensation like a gate so no impulse can pass through the pain afferent fibers now and results in analgesia gate is said to be closed now in this simplified schematic diagram of the gate control theory there are large fiber that is the a beta fiber that carries the touch sensation and the small diameter fiber or the s fiber that carries the pain sensation that are the a delta and c fibers that will end on t cell that is the pain afferent to the action system or central nervous system So, and sg here in yellow sg is the substantia gelatinosa now some neurons of substantia gelatinosa acts as inhibitory neuron and acts both on large and small diameter fibers which leads to the t cell which is the pain afferent to the central nervous system now normally what happens small diameter fiber if there is a pain sensation uh, from a wound then the small diameter fiber or s fiber carries the pain sensation and it inhibits the sg neuron which is inhibitory to the large and small diameter fibers so the sg neuron is inhibited so it will not now inhibit the small diameter uh, pain fibers or the large diameter touch fibers get it so the pain travels undiminished to the t cell and then to the central nervous system the gate is said to be open so when the only there is pain sensation it will inhibit the sg neuron and the inhibitory action of the sg neuron is withdrawal so the pain will travel to the central nervous system now if the large diameter fiber or l fiber is stimulated at the same time around the wounded area then the large diameter fiber or l fiber stimulate the sg neuron and now this sg neuron will inhibit both the pain and touch pathway that is it will inhibit both large and small diameter fibers and uh, so it will inhibit the both the l and s neurons before 
there is the T cell, which is the pain afferent. So, the pain pathway and the touch pathway both are inhibited. So, the pain now cannot go further to the central nervous system. So, the gate is said to be closed now. So, no pain will be transmitted to the central nervous system and there is analgesia. That explains the gate control theory. The descending endogenous pain inhibiting pathway. Morphine like agents like opioid acts at many level in the analgesia system. Now natural brain opiates are like pro-encephalin, pro-dynorphin, pro-opio-melanocortin and opiate like substance also produce analgesia like beta endorphin, met encephalin, leu encephalin. Descending analgesia system shown in the figure consists of three major component. Number one, periaqueductal gray and periventricular area of mesencephalon and upper pons around the aqueduct of sylvius and portion of the third and fourth ventricle. Neurons from this area send signal to the number two component that is the raphemagnus nucleus which is a thin midline nucleus in the lower pons and upper medulla. From this nucleus signal is transmitted down and the dorsolateral column in the spinal cord to the third component that is a pain inhibiting complex located in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. At this point encephalin neuron blocks the pain afferent pathway before the pain is relayed to the brain. Now electrical stimulation in the periaqueductal gray or raphemagnus nucleus can suppress strong pain afferent signal entering from the dorsal root. Now stimulation of higher brain area that excites the periaqueductal gray can also suppress the pain sensation. Periaqueductal gray and periventricular nuclei secret encephalin at their nerve ending in raphemagnus nucleus. Now fibers from the raphemagnus nucleus goes to the dorsal horn of spinal cord and secret serotonin at their ending. Serotonin uh, can cause local cord neuron to secret encephalin as well. The encephalin is believed to cause both pre and post synaptic inhibition of afferent A delta and C pain fibers where they synapse in the dorsal horn. In the picture you can see the encephalin neuron. Remaining part related to the pain like hyperalgesia, thalamic syndrome etc will be taught by Dr. Tony Bosch, madam. Thank you.